Oftentimes, an MLB career is ruined by a few things. There's injuries, there's getting up there in age, and there's lack of ability. For former first-round major leaguer Connor Jackson, his career declined in a way that we don't really see that often. Before getting into the decline, let's look back on the career of this once promising player. Before his professional career, Jackson attended the University of California, where he excelled on the diamond. In three years of college ball, he coincidentally played in 162 total games, which is the amount of a full MLB season. In those three college seasons, he batted 347 with 30 home runs, 136 RBIs, a ridiculous 433 OBP, and an OPS above 1. He also led the Pac-10 in on-base percentage in the 2003 season, reaching base safely at an insane rate of 53% of the time. After a great junior season, Jackson was selected 19th overall in the 2003 MLB Amateur Draft by the Arizona Diamondbacks. He went through the minor leagues relatively fast, only spending about one and a half seasons there until making his major league debut in the middle of 2005. Jackson was a sought out prospect with a ton of potential at that point. He was 6'2", he played multiple positions and had the ability to get on base better than most players, especially for his age. On July 25th, 2005, he made his debut at Wrigley Field in Chicago, but finished his rookie season only playing in 40 games and having 85 at-bats. He went on to hit an even 200 with a couple of home runs, but heading into the 2006 season, he won the starting first base job for the D-backs, and his playing time became much more consistent. In his first full season, Jackson hit a respectable 291 with 15 home runs, 79 RBIs, a 368 on base percentage, and an OPS slightly above 800. At just 24 years old, he put up some really promising numbers, and it looked like the Diamondbacks had their first baseman for the next decade. In 2007, he did miss some games with an injury, but he played in 130 games, putting up very similar numbers, but had less at-bats than the previous year. The Diamondbacks made it to the NLCS, but unfortunately got swept by a very hot Rockies team. Team. Jackson did hit 333 that series, but the Diamondbacks offense as a whole never really came alive. In 2008, Jackson had arguably his best season in the majors, hitting 300 with 12 home runs, 75 RBIs, and a career high 376 on base percentage. Now time for the downfall, which started early in the 2009 season. At this time, Jackson was entering his age 27 season, aka the prime of his career, but the complete opposite happened. Through 30 games, Jackson hit by far a career low 182 average with one home run and 14 RBIs. His career OBP to that point was 367, but that plummeted to 264. His career OPS was 810, and that dropped to an embarrassing 516. On May 22nd, 2009, it was reported that Connor Jackson had contracted something called Valley Fever, and that led to pneumonia as well. It was suspected that since a trip to San Francisco in mid-April that Jackson may have contracted the virus sometime around then. After learning about his diagnosis, Jackson gave some insight on how he felt and some interaction with doctors as well. Jackson said, I haven't lifted a weight. I haven't run in three weeks pretty much. We haven't even talked about a timetable. One doctor told me you're going to be fatigued for the rest of the year. The infectious disease guy said everybody reacts differently, so I don't know what to expect. However, I wouldn't expect it to be anytime soon. Valley fever is known to cause things like fevers, chills, chest pains, fatigue, and flu-like symptoms, which Jackson Jackson admitted he had basically all of those. He would end up losing about 35 pounds from this virus and admitted he'd sleep 12 to 13 hours per day and still felt exhausted after that. Unfortunately, he would go on to miss the remaining 129 games of the 2009 season, but looked to be back in the 2010 season. It's not like this virus quote unquote ended his career, but essentially it did. Jackson had a very promising career going into 2009, coming off three really good seasons at age 27, but by the time he was 29, he would play in his final MLB game. In 2010, he started the year with the Diamondbacks, but was dreadful, only hitting 236 in his first 42 games. On June 15th of 2010, he was traded to the Oakland Athletics, where he wasn't able to find success either and only played in 18 games. He'd finished the 2010 season with 60 total games played, a 236 average, only two home runs, and 16 RBIs. In 2011, for Oakland, he played in 102 games, batting 249 with four home runs and 38 RBIs, and a 3 15 on base percentage. On August 31st of 2011, he was traded to the Boston Red Sox where he'd play in only 12 games, hitting 158 and being a part of one of the biggest collapses in sports history for the Red Sox in September. 
In the 2012 offseason, Jackson signed a minor league deal with the Texas Rangers but did not make the team out of spring training. After being released before the season started, he signed a minor league deal with the Chicago White Sox where he'd only play in AAA hitting 277 with 9 home runs and 41 RBIs. His performance wasn't awful but did not warrant an MLB call up during the season. In the 2013 offseason, he signed with his last team which was the Baltimore Orioles. He played in spring training but was sent to AAA once the regular season started. He played in 9 minor league games during the 2013 season, hitting only 200 and on April 14th, he announced his retirement from baseball. Jackson through his first three full MLB seasons had a very promising career, but after contracting the Valley Fever and pneumonia in 2009, he was never the same player he once was. Here's his splits from his first three full seasons to the time after he got the virus. From 2006 to 2008, he hit 292 with 42 home runs, 214 RBIs, 421 hits, an on-base percentage of 371, and an OPS of 822. From 2009 to 2011, after he contracted the virus, he hit 232 with 8 home runs total, 73 RBIs, 153 hits, an on-base percentage of 312, and an OPS of 635. The changes in his numbers were drastic and he went from an above average MLB starter with a lot of potential to a bench option at the most. The former first round pick probably did not envision his MLB career being over by the age of 29, but that's what's crazy about sports and life in general, things can change on any given day. What if Jackson never contracted the fever and continued to hit over 290 for another 10 seasons or so? Does Paul Goldschmidt ever make it in Arizona? Does Jackson ever put together a few all-star appearances? I guess it's all up for speculation at this point. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, and by the way, for those wondering, Connor Jackson is healthy now and living a normal life, so thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you next time.